I got into the tree trimming business. Stay tuned. I was coming in to uh, the lot here and I pulled over. See all those trees along there? Well, apparently one of them needed trimming. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I gotta figure out. I gotta figure out how to get that thing down. All right, guys, so uh, give you a little update. I'm uh, here at the uh, it's Fairview, Oregon, which is near Portland, Oregon. Um, I think it's to my left that I'll be vid that I'm going to show video while I'm talking. Uh, give you a little chance to see some of the beautiful scenery that I saw coming in into the uh, the Portland area. Um, across that river is the uh, state of Washington, so it was it was beautiful. So. A couple of things I want to talk about today is uh, it's about one year since I've been on the road, um, over the road, on my own, and it's been a, quite a interesting year to reflect on. I honestly feel like I felt like I've been doing this for a year, six months into trucking. It, you just learn so much so quick, but I'm still learning. I mean, I'm still learning. The American trucker will always be learning. So it's been a it's been an interesting journey. Definitely been an adventure. I'm really happy to be up here. Um, with, this is kind of ironic though. Look at this. So um, across the street, I don't know if you can see that. Across the street is the. Um, yeah, you check in up there. Got to find out where to check in. Um, is night transportation terminal. So, uh, ain't gonna lie, still kind of miss night. A lot of good people there. They got things, they, you know, it's a big company, so there's there's definitely some frustrations with it. But one thing I do like is, you know, like terminal right there, there's no terminals. Uh, terminals to me, the only thing that are good about terminals is you got a safe place to go and park. And, you know, parking is, uh, parking is a big part of trucking. I didn't know that when I uh, got into this. Um, I did my school at night and um, made some really good friends out of school and we still stay in touch. Shout out to Bobby Boucher. It's not really his last name. I didn't realize that was the water boy's name. I just, he introduced himself as Bobby Boucher so I thought that's what his name was, but <laughs> it's not. And, uh, and Sean, I call him Sean Knight. I don't know his last name, but he was actually from Atlanta, really nice guy. Just just a really good, even keeled person. He ended up getting a uh, kind of a local gig at, uh, at night in Atlanta. And God love him for it. He works his ass off, but he gets paid really well um, for night. But you know, I get more cents per mile because they don't have any terminals. They don't have any, they don't have the overhead expense that night transportation has. And uh, I still see a lot of nights, crappy old trailers going down the road. Um, and the trailers I've been pulling are air air 
air ride. Uh, when I was with Metro, they had the <clears throat> they had the airlines in the, the rear tires that would keep them inflated if they ever got a flat, which were nice. And both of the trailers in the back open and close very easily. Um, so instead of turning the crank, you actually just pull a air level, and it, the, that's the air assist. Um, so it's a nice ride, but um, we'll see what the future what the future brings. Right now, I'm happy with traveling over the road. I got some good miles this route from Texas to um, Portland, Oregon area, and then I got another run from Portland out. They brokered it which is fine i still get paid pretty well so i like that um one of the other things i wanted to talk about was what i've learned about recaps and you know your one thing is your trainer can only teach you so much uh, because they got to give you the foundation the basics and then you're going to learn a lot every day when you're on your own and you learn more and you learn it faster when you're on your own because you got to learn it you got to figure it out you ask other drivers one thing i can tell any driver that's new new to the business is you want to create a, a network of experienced drivers, whether it's co-drivers that are with your company or with another company. Anybody you meet at a truck stop, if they seem to be somebody that you could probably count on, ask them for their phone number. They're generally okay with call, you know, you calling them and, and ask them because trip planning is an art. It really is. Um, I was going to go around uh, the mountains and I just didn't have enough hours to do it so I checked with a couple of my uh, senior drivers that had the experience they said you're gonna have to go up through the mountains uh, it saved me five hours so and it really wasn't too bad so it worked out I've been blessed with the weather um, hope you enjoyed my little uh, tree trimming incident every day there's something like that that I go through I don't share everything with you but I try to share what I can um, but on um, on the recaps, the recaps are, um, let's say you start out on a Monday and they say it's an eight day and then you get your recaps back. But I used to think, okay, if I start off on Monday, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Monday's the eighth day. Well, yeah, you get them back, but you don't get them back until, now listen to this. It depends on where your terminal your home terminal is out of. Now, if you're out of the, um, I'm out of central. I live in the Eastern, but if you're out of central time, which is where I am, Gary, Indiana right now, and that's not where I'm at, but that's where I'm out of, they, uh, that would be 1 a.m. is when you get your recaps, but it's not Monday, it's Tuesday morning, 1 a.m. So. The thing I learned most is I, and I'm, it's working for me. I got five hours left on my clock today. Today's Monday. I've been going for a full week. I've been really watching it. I write it down. I write it down here. It's just a lot of mess for you. I just, you know, I write down each day what my goal is. I try to average eight hours, 25 minutes a day so that I end up with four hours left over on Tuesday when I get my recaps, which I'm not gonna end up with that because you always run harder than, well, you should run harder. But um, it's uh, it's working out. So it's working out, but keep in mind, you don't get your recaps back until the next morning after one week. So if you start out on a Monday, then a week from Tuesday morning at, in my situation, 1 a.m., I'll begin getting my recaps. Now, I think one of the most important things to try to do is to try to run a good long day on that first day out. But ironically, I've never been able to do that because when I leave out on Monday, I'm typically picking up a load and it's not generally very early. And then I take a long time to get through Atlanta because that's where I'm at typically. And uh, places start um, shutting down and trying to find parking. Then I usually only get five to maybe seven hours drive time and I'd rather drive 10, but I don't want to drive and uh, not find a parking spot 
at eight or nine o'clock at night. I just, that's just too much stress for the old man here. Um, but I think I'm gonna have, I'm gonna try to push it next time I start. So the question will be, as I don't go home now, today is the, uh, the 9th, which is uh, Monday. I will not be home this coming weekend. I won't be home until next weekend. So I'll be running two weeks on recaps, which I'm not too sure. I'm gonna work this out with my dispatch, but I might do a 34 hour at the terminal in St. Cloud, Minnesota. I don't think I will. I don't want to actually. I'm gonna try not to. Um, I'm gonna try to get a load because if I deliver Thursday, if I don't get a load out Friday, then I will be sitting, but I'll be sitting Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's three days, that's too long. So, uh, you know, the whole point of being away from home is to earn money. That's the trade-off, that's why we do it. Um, I will say that, you know, looking at the road and the beautiful scenery is definitely one of the major reasons I got into over-the-road trucking in addition to, I wanted to see to, what it was like to ride in my brother's bootsteps, you know, foot, footsteps, um, that passed away 11 years ago now. And my younger brother's still currently driving. He's very busy. I haven't been able to catch up with him. Um, He's a real professional. He, he takes his business, he takes his trucking very serious. And that's a work ethic that um, I was born and raised in. Uh, and that's one of the things I think I, I enjoy the most about this is, is it, does, it does require a good work ethic. Now it's not physically hard to do at all. Um, mentally, it's difficult and challenging. Um, you get tired, you don't really have a lot of time to yourself. Sometimes you'll have a little bit of time in between where you can do stuff as far as like, you know, if I'm doing the videos. I mean, it took four hours to do that last video. And uh, that's because I messed it up and I had to redo it. But, um, you know, you're mostly trying to just run, find a place to shut down, get something to eat and rest. And then you do the same thing the next day. So there's constant trip planning going on. You have an overall trip plan, just like I was looking. Um, I got 1,500 some miles I gotta have to go after uh, I pick up this next load. And so that's basically 500 miles a day is 15, 15, that's, you know, three 10 hour days. But what I have to do is I have to break it up into five hours today and then Unfortunately, I can only go five hours tomorrow, so I'm probably going to have to request a later delivery time on Thursday for delivery because I probably will need that time to drive because of my clock. And that's the thing about recaps is you can only go with the amount of hours that you have on your recap. So it's kind of how it works. That's uh, that's a lesson to be learned. Um, but it's not difficult. Uh, the hardest part is is um, you know I own a business, and my wife's been very good at um, she's been wonderful, and she stepped right up. She's very capable. She used to be an executive assistant for a five hundred million dollar company years ago, and I was always impressed with how well she was able to handle herself. She's very diplomatic. She's really good with people. She doesn't really like to be in the front. I like to be in the front, you know, like with people. I like to be the front person and the one that, where the parents come to at the gym and they talk to me and I, I, I like that part of it. That interaction is good. I don't have that out here, so I'm missing that. I miss the coaching, um, but like I said, this was an opportunity for me to, uh, to take upon this adventure and that relieved the company from having to pay me for a little while while we continue to grow the business. And my wife has stepped up and um, I've got a business partner also who's a coach. He's also works for a, um, a US subsidiary of US Bank. He's, a, he's an executive in the, in the uh, finance 
department, so he's kind of like our controller. He runs our company like a Fortune 500 company, I tell him, which is good, which is good. So that business is chugging along and I'm able to do this. So it's kind of serving its purpose. And after we get done paying off of our, our loans for the, for the business, I'm hopeful that um, I'll be able to re-engage with the business and I don't know what's gonna happen with trucking at that, at that time. But that's probably a year or two off. So in the meantime, I've gotta try to enjoy doing this. That's why I picked up this hobby of YouTube to give, to preoccupy myself and to share whatever it is that I'm going through. I'm an over 50. I'm not, um, I'm just a regular guy. I don't really have any experience in doing this. I. I thought it would be an interesting challenge and it has been a challenge, um, but it's been good for the most part. The learning experience has been very interesting. I mean, it, you know, I was talking to my wife and uh, as I was telling her about all the inconveniences that pop up every single day, I got to thinking, you know what, that's life, that's life. You know, my daughter was in a, a little accident. She's fine. It was a car bumped into her, but it's it's caused her a lot of inconvenience. Um, and I'm having, I'm teaching her to, to deal with all the issues. So I told the um, the person that wanted to handle the claim, I said, deal directly with my daughter. She's senior in college. She needs to be able to handle all this. And so she's constantly checking with me to say, you know, I got to get a rental. I said, okay, well, you call these people and it's all covered. and. And then she ended up getting a, her rental car towed at college because she didn't have a permit. So that was 160 bucks, which I had to pay for. But, you know, she didn't know. I don't know that I would have thought about that even. So that's inconvenient for me and her. Uh, but she went ahead and got another temporary tag. So, you know, every day, no matter what we're doing, we're gonna be dealing with inconveniences so I think the thing I'm learning and I'm learning it at every day yeah I get really frustrated out here on the road and then I can I can quickly go into oh you know what I don't need this I'll go back to the gym and I'll figure something out but even when I was running the gym there were daily things that went on constantly that there's you know when you're running a business you're it's like, uh, you know, you just, every every minute of the day, you're problem solving and that's just the way it is. That's, that's, that's just life. So it's been an interesting year. So I hope that helps on the recaps for any of you uh, new drivers out there. And um, yeah, I'm just sitting here waiting to get unloaded. I'm supposed to be here at 12 and it's, uh, nine after 12 and the truck hasn't moved. And I've got a pickup to do 30 miles from here in two hours, so kind of like to get going. All right, guys, take care.